Hello everybody, PSW60 here, and we're back with another episode of Let's Play Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Minute off last time at the save point, so let's just get back to hunting from here. Now, we mentioned before, or rather I guess I mentioned before, that the campaigner was trying to find an ancient weapon called the Chrono Scepter. It's just basically the standard, hugely powerful kind of ancient super weapon that was broken up into several different pieces to make sure that it would never be used again because it was so overly powerful. It's split up into eight pieces, one for each of these eight levels, and we're going to find it and put it back together, because if we have it, campaigner can't get it. But let's expand our arsenal just a little bit for now. With the shotgun equivalent of tech arrows. Now, something I hadn't mentioned last time is that when you pick up the secondary ammo types, the explosive shells, the tech arrows, you can't switch from them until you run out of ammo. And if you need it, another one of those portals will pop up there. I'll point them out from time to time, the ones that I know where they're at at least. And if you missed some of the other ones, since they're only open for a limited time, you can go pick up some of the later ones. And I hadn't mentioned this in the last one either. These deer and boar that are running around, you can shoot them for health. They'll drop two healths. Um, easiest way to do it is with the shotgun because it's going to hit him a couple of times. Monkeys, however, are pretty much invulnerable to everything we have right now. But getting back to this, to the, the secondary ammo types, as long as you've got explosive shells or tech arrows, you can't use the regular arrows. And here we have a tier 2 Perlin. He's a little more mobile than his more fledgling counterparts. I'm not sure if they're just younger Perlin that, sh that do the shockwaves and don't move much, or if it's like a military thing. He's also got a death throw that can still hit you. But he's definitely some of the more dangerous ranking Perling. And now we're going to get a new species. These are Leapers. Can't imagine where that name came from. But like the Perlin species, there's different stages of development. We saw the juveniles back there that had the gray underbellies. That's more of an adolescent. They hit a little bit harder, they're slightly larger, and they take one more bullet to go down. That is not, however, where they stop at. And up here, we're going to see the adult, which is significantly larger, hits a good bit harder, and takes, again, a little more punishment. But leapers are kind of annoying, so let's get out of here. Yes. For anyone that's played Doom, this is the equivalent of the invulnerability. This is the spiritual invulnerability. You pick it up, you're invincible, everything turns disco, and everything slows to a crawl. 
including your own shots. Hence the delayed reaction of shooting that guy. Slow motion can be kind of fun. It does have a glitch if you're playing on hard mode, in that once the slowdown period for the spiritual invincibility is done, everything starts to move a lot faster. It's an easy enough glitch to fix. You just go through a portal. And conveniently enough, we've got one of those right here. These guys, these are beetles. They don't hurt a lot, but they're kind of annoying to hit with anything other than the knife. Thankfully, they are extremely easy to hit with a knife, and they go down in one hit. Now, I bet you before that exploration was big in Turok. If you see a portal, and you still have other areas left to explore, don't take the portal. There's a decent chance that the portal is going to be a one-way trip, especially in some of the later levels. And you might miss out on some decent stuff like those explosive shells. Or this here, if you need it. This is the last of the health pickups. This is a full health. If you're under 100 health, you could pick up a full health, and it'll take you up to 100. Up to the soft cap. But since we're already over that, it's not going to do anything for us. So, we gotta leave it behind. Again, we've still got more areas to explore here. So, we don't want to take the portal. The other method you can use to aid in your exploration is you'll notice some areas are marked with life force talismans. You might as well go the other way first, and that way you know you haven't gone the life force route. Being underwater in Turok is kind of sort of a death sentence. You don't have access to any weapons other than your knife in the first game. You generally won't see too many enemies other than leapers underwater. Some enemies can still shoot at you when you're underwater, but you won't directly encounter them down there other than leapers. But it's not a good place to be. And since the Leapers are repeatedly spawning in, let's... leave them behind. But we did just pick up a new weapon, so let's... test it out a little bit. This is your basic run-of-the-mill assault rifle. It functions similarly to other assault rifles, it just uses burst fire. <laughs> uses the same ammo that a pistol does, it just shoots three bullets at once. Well, three bullets in a row. If you're thinking this place looks a bit maze-like, you'd be right. Uh, maybe you could use the auto map to help you figure out where to go. But, no. It's disabled in this area. You don't really have much to go on other than your own memory. But, you do want to explore a bit. 
because this area has some goodies hidden in it. For starters, this crystal. This crystal is the first piece of the Chrono Scepter. We're going to find one in each level. This is probably the easiest one to find. The other ones can be hidden in some fairly out of the way locations. But we're still going to be picking all of them up and putting this thing together. And then we have another key. Now, I hadn't mentioned it before, but picking hard mode has the same effect on gameplay that a lot of other older games did, in that enemies hit harder and take a little bit more punishment. But if you're playing in normal mode, enemies will also drop weapons and the two health pickups. They'll also drop a third kind of pickup, which doesn't seem to drop in hard mode for the same reasons that ammo doesn't drop, it's just a feature of hard mode, but it's a pickup called the Mortal Wound. What it does is it increases that soft cap on your health from 100 to 105, and it'll go up by 5 for everyone you pick up, up to a max of 120. And in case you needed another sub area portal will pop up down there. But once you get up to 120 from the mortal wound pickups, that's it. They really stop doing anything for you. They give a slight health boost. But it's been a while since I played on normal. So I'm not 100% sure what it is. I believe it's 5 health that they'll give you. This guy. Looks exactly like the Life Force tokens. Except it's a different color. It does the exact same thing that the Life Force tokens do. Except it gives you 10 of them. And if you need it, another sub-area portal will pop up down there. This should be our last key. Ominous. This is the last tier of Perlin. That's their highest ranking or most evolved. Well, Perlin. They can take an alright amount of punishment, but they just shoot fireballs, which kind of hurt. They don't really move much. I'd still say the ones that chase you down are probably a little bit more hectic to deal with. There's always the chance that you'll accidentally back off over the cliff. But those guys you can just simply strafe left and right and avoid their fireballs pretty easily. They won't come after you or anything. And this is the end of the first level. This is the hub area where we can put the keys we've been collecting to go to other levels. First level doesn't have its own portal, but all the other seven do. And we're going to be going into this one next time on Turok Dinosaur Hunter. <laughs>